Hi there. So this is your screencast about motion graphs. So we're going to talk about in this screencast uh, representing motion in graphs, some terminal velocity, and then something about rel something called relative motion. So let's get started. So motion graphs, well, the equations can be a bit cryptic. The graphs let us visualize the motion. We're going to start with a displacement graph. So and then we'll get on to velocity and acceleration, and then we'll look at all three together. So a displacement versus time graph could look something like this. This is just a quadrant one plot. But also it could look like this. Displacement is a vector, so it could be negative. So we have areas, regions um, quadrant one and four here. So displacement is one dimensional. That is, it can go forward or backwards, positive being forward, negative being backwards. And here's an example of a displacement time graph. Just something arbitrary. So this says the object is moving away from the origin at some constant velocity, and it stays at the same place. It's at rest for a while. And then it heads back towards the origin, and again it it becomes back to where it started, and then it actually get, ends up behind where it started, some negative displacement. So how do you show an object at rest on a displacement time graph? Well, just a horizontal line. It can be anywhere on here. It can be up here, down here, it doesn't matter. Constant velocity could look something like this. So what are we going to get from this? How do we know it's velocity? Well, if you pick two points, you make a triangle, you get this change in velocity over this change in time. Take that ratio, that's the slope of this line. That represents change in displacement over time, which we know as velocity. So the slope or gradient of a, a position or displacement time graph is velocity. Well, how about showing acceleration on a displacement time graph? What would that look like? Well, acceler acceleration means constantly changing velocity. So what would changing velocity look like? If you imagine, here could look something like this. So if we take a point here, and we know the slope at this point, we'd have to take a tangent line since the, right, the slope is constantly changing. So we draw a tra tangent line like we learned how to in math, and we find the slope here, or the gradient here. We get this value, and at some later time, at this point here, we have a different slope, and that's a greater slope. So we can see we had a smaller slope or smaller velocity earlier on, and over here at this time, later time, we have a, a greater slope or greater velocity. That means the object is accelerating, its velocity is changing. What would negative acceleration look like? Well, let's check this out, see what's happening here. If we had a tangent line here, we've got a negative slope. It's kind of a large negative slope. Later on down here, it would be more gradual. We could have a smaller negative slope. So we could say we, this object at this time is going has a higher negative velocity. And back here, it's got a lower negative velocity. So an example would be like you're in a, um, a car and you're in reverse. You're moving along in reverse, but you're stepping on the brake. So you're going in reverse, but you're eventually you're going to go more slowly in reverse. How about this right here? Could you predict, could you describe the motion here? If you'd like to try, you can pause your video. Okay, well the motion here starts off essentially at rest. We can see the slope up here is horizontal. That means the object is kind of at, is it close to being at rest here. And as we gain in time, you see we're getting some negative slope, and, and the slope out here, we're getting even greater negative slope. So the object is increasing velocity negatively. So in a car, the example there would be you're in reverse and you're stepping on the gas pedal, so you're increasing your speed uh, backward. Let's look at velocity in time graphs. So velocity is now on our uh, vertical axis. And we can have both positive and negative portions. At rest, what would that look like? Well, right here at zero velocity, that means it's at rest. How about constant velocity? What would that look like on a velocity time graph? Well, there's some constant pos positive velocity. It's at the same velocity value as time continues. It could be, could be negative also. It could have a negative velocity. What would acceleration look like on a velocity time graph? Well, acceleration means changing velocity, so this can't be just a horizontal line. It has to be something else. So here's an example of uh, we have a positive slope here. 
So if we try find the slope here, this is our change in velocity over change in time. That's going to give us the slope of this line, which we recognize as acceleration. So if you take the, the slope or gradient of a velocity time graph, you get acceleration. Okay, can we get displacement from a velocity time graph? Can we go the other way? Well, let's check out this situation right here. Here we have this negative velocity at an early time, and then later on its velocity is changing, and it becomes zero velocity here. It briefly stops, then it begins moving forward over here. We know displacement to be velocity times time. Well, velocity times time on this graph is represented by the area. So, for example, this area here. So the area under the curve is going to give us the displacement of the object. Notice this area up here is positive, right, when the velocity is positive, And this area down here is going to be negative. So to find the total or net displacement, we would have to take the difference of these two areas. Okay, let's look at acceleration in time graphs. Now we're looking at acceleration on the vertical axis. And again, we can have positive or negative acceleration. Zero acceleration would be, again, right along the horizontal time axis right here. But we could represent uh, constant acceleration with just a horizontal line. This means that velocity is increasing. Likewise, we could have some negative acceleration. This could be, for example, the acceleration of gravity if you decide the direction of the acceleration is downward. Okay. Can we know velocity from an acceleration time graph? Well, again, like we did with the other graph, when we found displacement from a velocity time graph, acceleration times time gives us velocity. So this area under here is going to give us the change in the object's velocity over that time period. So if we could find that area, that would give us how much the velocity changed in that time period. Okay, let's look at all three of the graphs together. If we stack them nicely, line up the time axis, Usually you put displacement on top, velocity next, and then acceleration. And we'll put in some data here. Okay, well, what does this show us? So, for example, we have a constant acceleration. That means the velocity is changing constantly. Well, that's what this says. Velocity is increasing constantly. And if you can imagine what the displacement curve would look like, the that plot would look something like this. This is a, a square relationship. This is, we get this from our one-half at squared. So if you want to remember, just summary now, if you want to go from displacement to velocity, you have to find the slope. So the slope here is going to give us the velocity at that point. Likewise, the slope of this velocity curve is going to give us the acceleration. So as you go from in this direction down here, right, taking the gradient or slope gives you that next quantity. If you want to go the other way, so if you want to go up, up direction, Right, you want to find the area. The area under this curve right here would give you the change in velocity over that amount of time. Likewise, the same thing here. The area under this velocity time graph would give us the displacement in that time period. Okay, There are some really great applets here. You can go on online. These are clickable, should be in the PDF file I give you. And you can practice uh, some motion graphs. Okay, so let's, let's talk about air resistance. These, these examples we've been looking at do not include air resistance. Well, wh what if there is air resistance? What's, what's going to happen? So if we imagine a skydiver falling at time zero. He's not going anywhere, or she's not going anywhere. So the minute the person steps off the helicopter or airplane or cliff, wherever he's coming from or she's coming from, they briefly have a velocity of zero. They're going to quickly start to accelerate, however, Due to gravity, eventually they, they get faster and faster. But after some time, the velocity is not going to increase anymore. And that means the acceleration goes to zero. So gravity is accelerating them downward. So there is that force of gravity on them. But there's also air resistance pushing back up. And when that force of the air resistance equals the, the force due to gravity, the, the weight of the person, we have a situation where the forces are balanced and there's no more increase in velocity. That's called terminal velocity. So velocity at some later time remains the same. What would that look like on a graph? 
So if we have velocity time here, think about what this graph might look like if an object initially accelerates, but then eventually reach, reaches a constant uh, velocity. So the accelerating would look something like you know, increasing up like this, but constant velocity was a horizontal line, we remember. So if we can kind of combine those two, it might look something like this. So initially we have an increasing velocity, but after some time we have this asymptotic relationship here where the velocity reaches some maximum value, and this would be our terminal velocity right there. So the terminal velocity of a skydiver um, is probably around 100, 120 miles an hour, depending on how, how big they are. Okay, a little bit about relative motion. Motion is relative. What do we mean by that? Well, if I asked you, SpongeBob, see him here? Is he moving? As I play the video, you tell me if he's moving or not. So, what do you think? Is he moving? Well, <laughs> the answer I think is maybe. Or it depends. Well, it depends on what. Relative to the camera, right? the SpongeBob stayed right in the middle of the screen that whole video. So relative to the camera, the SpongeBob was not moving. However, if you asked one of the students in the classroom out here, and then you asked them if the SpongeBob was moving, they'd probably say yes. Or they should say yes. So this is what an example of what we mean by motion being relative. Okay, forces are next. That's the screencast for this one. Hope that helps. Bye.